Hi, so this is my discussion post um, that's comparing and contrasting Hesiod and Homer on a multitude of things. So first of all, we have social structures. I think when it comes to ho uh, Hesiod, I mean, um, social structures tend to be uh, based on how virtuously that person lived. Uh, to him, anyway, he tends to think that poorer citizens need to live more virtuously than they already are, and he believes that living virtuously should bring you wealth and prosperity, which has a big effect on where you are in the social structure. Um, he also believes that neighbors should be very um, kind to each other and should constantly have a give-and-take sort of relationship, which um, in and of itself kind of is more of a virtuous thing, but also I think it has a lot to say about how uh, a society worked as a whole, probably. If you were expected to do that for your neighbor, you were probably expected to do that for a lot of other situations. Um, he also speaks about how women are untrustworthy to him. Um, this could also show that women didn't necessarily do uh, trading and stuff like that, mostly because um, perhaps men actually believed this on a larger scale. Uh, it also talks about having more sons the better, so that probably could help a social structure, and it also sees that this entire society is kind of based on a patriarchal um, ideal as well as um, preferring sons to daughters, probably. Then he talks about how um, marriage should work and how old you should be when you do it. And I thought it was interesting that women are supposed to marry in their fifth year of being a woman, whereas men weren't supposed to marry until they were, like, the age of 30, uh, which tells you a lot about the social structures because right then and there, men are uh, marrying women who are younger than them, probably at least a decade younger than them. So I thought that was very interesting. When it comes to Homer's ideas on social structures... Even a goddess is, um, like Thetis, she doesn't have a say in who she marries, which it's possible that this is, you know, another, uh, because it's so ancient, it's possible that they see marriage and sex as the same thing. So it's possible she was raped, not necessarily married, but that's just speculation on my part. Anyway, um, if it is in fact marriage, it's interesting to me that even a goddess didn't have a say in who she was going to marry and ended up marrying a mortal man. Um, somehow he had more say in all of that. So that was interesting to me. Also, um, women don't dance in all of the, like, dance scenes that you see. And for me, that kind of made it seem as though men are trying to, like, show off in this case or something. Or they're dancing in a very, like, specific way for a specific reason. So I think that has a lot to speak on their social structure. Um, they also talk about, uh, judges and elders and how they decide disputes. So... The judges are the ones that are supposed to be deciding it, but the people continuously talk about it and try to get their uh, views seen. Um, so that had a lot to do with, I think, um, what would eventually become Greek democracy and the like. I thought it was interesting that um, you can even see little parts of that in just, you know, city disputes. So, yeah. Um, they also mention a lot of uh, councils and... Um, the king specifically, I thought this weird, um, how, how they showed one and the other was very interesting to me because the council in and of itself, all of them were in trouble because they couldn't make a decision. So they were torn and they, uh, were fearing for their lives, you know, but when it comes to the king, he's shown as very prosperous. And so I thought that was a very interesting way of showing like the council can't make a decision. It can't be, you know, whatever, but the king is very prosperous and the king can do what he wants and, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so when it comes to leader and government, also obviously with Homer, I've already said, um, they do have a king, they have, um, judges and the like that can help disputes should they, they arrive, um, king was prosperous, council was divided, but there was, in fact, a council, which is interesting enough in its own right. Uh, Hesiod tends to say, um... Like, he doesn't mention a lot of specific leaders as much as Homer does, but he does say that um, when it comes to people that are, like, in charge of, like, um, money-making at the very least, you know, whether agricultural or uh, mercantile or whatever else, um, that that man is supposed to own everything and earn everything. Um, as opposed to, say, somebody working the land and not owning something, that to him is like, that was a bad choice on your part, even though um, people are born poor and there's not really anything they can do about it. So I thought that was very interesting. Uh, when it comes to values of Hesiod, uh, his values are hard work, definitely. Um, he believes that you should work 
um, for everything you get, as well as you should live a just life. And it is that uh, idea, the just in you, I guess, um, that is supposed to get you the good things in life. Like, Demeter and Zeus are supposed to pay it forward when you do good things and when you um, act in a just way. So I thought that was interesting. Also, um, he believes in not procrastinating, which was interesting to read. So yeah. Then you have Homer, whose emphasis is more on uh, victory in battle and duty to family, which this specifically I saw in um, Thetis trying to protect Achilles. Uh, interesting because she hated the marriage and um, has this kid, even though presumably she didn't want one, maybe. And then... Um, still will try to defend Achilles to the death, even though she knows that he's going to die. She's like, I'm still going to do everything I can to help him. Um, so that was really interesting. Then you have public image, which I know the excerpt that we had of it wasn't really, um, didn't tell the whole story, I guess. But Achilles' story is legitimately, like, the only reason they're having that argument in the first place was because of public, public image and because Achilles felt like he wasn't getting his due. So thought that was really interesting. Uh, when it came to the Greek, non-Greek, and identity, uh, Hesiod doesn't really talk that much about other places, so much as just, like, w what it makes to be Greek. So, first of all, there's the um, idea of being just that is pushed like crazy. Every uh, Greek should be just, and that is, like, definitely a part of their identity. Then you have the unity in, like, religion. Like, that's a huge thing for them is, like, you should all know this. You all, you know, believe in these gods and everything. Like, that seems to be what they also see as, like, a very Greek thing. Um, so, yeah. When it comes to Homer, he usually pushes things like honor and duty more than, uh, say, religion, especially because some of the characters are uh, demigods anyway. So he's kind of like, I mean, you should probably know by now. Um... So yeah, also when it comes to Homer and Greek identity, they do mention the um, Trojans. However, in this excerpt, I didn't feel like they said anything bad about the Trojans. They just kind of mentioned that they were at war with the Trojans. So um, although I know that the Greeks weren't necessarily fond of the Trojans, especially during this war, um, I felt like the excerpts themselves didn't actually comment on that, so I won't either. When it comes to material culture... Um, I feel like Hesiod had this, like, obsession with an abundance of food. Like, <laughs> the most important thing to him was that you had, you know, an abundance of cattle, an abundance of ox to work your field so that you could have an abundance of grain or whatever, abundance of grapes in your vineyard. Like, that was just a very, very, like, specific thing in the material that a person is supposed to own. On top of that, uh, good flocks is also another thing which can be used for meat, obviously, but um, also, you know, like, being able to make other goods from all of that and everything. Um, also, wealth was very important to him, and in fact, he says something along the lines of wealth is confidence, which um, I thought was <laughs> really showing of how they felt about gold and things like that. Like, um, to be uh, poor was shameful because that meant that you weren't living just enough. Um, is how I interpret what Hesiod is saying. So because of that, wealth equals confidence would mean that you would have to do enough good things and you would have to be bold and you would have to be brave and then you would get your wealth. So it like equated to this thing. So their material culture is very much like who they are inside. When it comes to Homer, uh, he has a depiction of like good life and the descriptions of like what a Greek might see as important. So you've got like, you know, jewelry and stuff. You've got specifically what people are wearing and everything. You've got, um, you've got physical, um, things that people own. You also have the abundance of food. That is also a huge thing in the entire thing. Um, gold is wanted by all involved. And you see that with a council that can't make a decision on where the gold is going to go. And everyone wants the gold. And that's why the council is so scared is because everyone is about to overrun the council. So, um, obviously gold is very important in, uh, Greek life. So, when it comes to the questions, my answer to the first question is that I believe that Homer is actually more accurate at depicting uh, Greeks as they probably actually were. The reason for this is because I feel like Hesiod takes a philosophical view on it, which is great, but philosophical ideas usually tend to be ideological and not necessarily what's actually happening in the culture. Whereas Homer tends to um, say something 
things that are good and bad of the culture. Like, for example, this council's about to be killed. These, you know, shepherds are killed for no reason just because the army gets restless, I believe. Maybe I'm misreading that, but... Um, you know, he, he shows life as it is and not necessarily in the dreamlike state that I think Hesiod really tells it in. Um, yeah. Then it comes to my second question, um, which is what's the nature of memory? So, when it comes to this question, I felt like, um, a lot of it had to do with, like, um, as well, like, the same reason that they have so much material, material culture. These stories are how people remember how good of a person you were. Because um, if people don't remember the good deeds you did, then they're not going to remember how good of a person you were. You know, like the whole thing about Greek culture is you have to be, you know, very vocal and very obvious and bold with whatever good things you're doing. So the people know that you're good. Like it all has to be very specifically shown and usually shown in abundance or exuberance or something. Um, so when it comes to telling these stories, these people absolutely need to see um, that these characters did good deeds, not necessarily just hear that they were a good person, but that they see it and physically, you know, like all of these stories and everything have actions to it so that they can see that these people were good. So to me, that's the um, nature of memory in ancient Greece. And specifically for these two people is that the memory is what makes you a good person and the, the memory of you doing good things is how they prove that they are that good person.